Good evening, everybody. Popcorn Culture Junkie. Happy St. Patty's Day. I'm drinking myself. I'm well aware this is not green beer, but I don't have green beer in this house, so a rusty nail will do just fine. Anyway, a couple of things. I want to say a big thank you to my subscribers. I know I don't have that many subscribers, but I am grateful for what I have, and from the bottom of my heart, thank you. Also to everybody who's rated and commented, thank you. You guys are awesome. Um, I'm doing a shameless blog promotion. <laughs> I had an overdose of snark, and I ended up just... I had a blog post that was pretty funny. Well, to me it's pretty funny, but... I find snark rather funny. One of my uh, one of my Facebook groups, um, it's a child-free Facebook group. Uh, one of the girls posted a couple, you know, those um, hundred reasons that we should have kids. Those kinds of lists. Um, she posted one list was the one list that was posted was hundred reasons why I should have why people should have kids. You know, and they're pretty laughable. And then another list that she posted was 40 reasons why women should have kids. And that one came across as very sanctimonious. Now here's the thing, though. If you post anything online, you should know that it becomes public domain. Anybody could look at it, anybody could comment, anybody could laugh at it or praise it. You take a risk anytime you post anything online. So I'm quite sure that I'm going to get quite a bit of snark for that post. However, I set up my blog so that comments are moderated, so that I can either approve or disapprove of them. But we'll see what happens. I'll put a link in the description. Now, my main thing tonight is I don't want to do too much child-free stuff. I mean, I mean, I do child-free videos all the time, but I'll do some more in the future. Tonight, though, I'm going to be living my childhood again. Um, I grew up in the 80s. I loved a lot of the cartoons in the 80s, and DC, I think, had its heyday in the 80s as well. I mean, they have some good stuff now, but a lot of their stuff in the 80s is just awesome. I'll start off with the comic book stuff. I mean, back then, I wasn't really reading a lot of comic books, but there were some good, good graphic novels that came out in the 80s, like this one, Crisis on Infinite Earths. Now, for you newcomers to the DC Universe, it's going to be very convoluted and very confusing. This was done mainly to clear up continuity. And, of course, after that, continuity went to crap again many years later. But it's still a good book. And if you don't feel like actually reading the story, you can always look on the cover and count out count the characters or just point out the characters. Play Where's Waldo with DC comic book characters. And then this has been popular again lately, Watchmen. Of course, in one of my classes, this is actually required reading. I mean, how often does that happen? A graphic book from the 1980s becoming a required reading book for a class. But, you know, there's that, and I'm telling you, though, I mean, anybody who's lived through the 80s knows that the cartoons back then kicked so much ass. I had a much bigger collection years ago, but due to moving around and people not sending shit when they're supposed to, I ended up losing quite a few of my cartoons. I had the entire Transformers collection, G1 baby. I had he I had the He-Man series, I had Jim, I had Thundercats. I had quite a few series. But I mean once I have the money I'll rebuy all that. I did, however, manage to hang on to a few others. I think Voltron was one of the biggest ones that I fell in love with. I liked Lion Voltron. It was pretty cool. However, though, I didn't really care for Keith too much. I thought he was kind of an idiot. And he's your typical milk toast good guy leader. And frankly, he was kind of boring. I thought Lance was better. But... And that leads us into Vehicle Voltron. 
I actually like this one a lot better than Lion Voltron. I don't know if it's because Vehicle Voltron wasn't as popular back then, or what. I mean, I kept remembering there were two Voltrons when I was a kid. And for a long time, I thought, I thought my brain was messed up. I thought I was just dreaming. But luckily... People's, people begged enough for these cartoons to be put into DVD sets, and I'm very grateful they're in DVD sets. I love reliving those memories. And, well, cartoons just cheer me up. I mean, if I watch them all the time, then... Well, then again, there's nothing wrong with watching them all the time, but... I just don't. You gotta spice up things, you know? Let's see, what's another good cartoon from the 80s? Silverhawks. These guys were freaking awesome. And as far as character crushes go, I think I had a bit of a crush on Steel Will. I don't know, there was just something about the guy. You know, despite being mostly made of metal, he looked pretty cuddly. <laughs> and then jumping from that to Dungeons and Dragons... I mean, this was a rather strange cartoon, but I thought it was pretty cool. And you can get it for pretty cheap on Amazon as well. I got I got that DVD set with all the episodes for $6, I think. So it's not so bad. Yeah, I, I mean, I watched He-Man. I watched a lot of other cartoons as well, but... One cartoon in particular really sticks out, and it's Filmation's Ghostbusters. I have this. I do have the second volume as well. I mean, when this cartoon first came out, I was thinking, oh my god, they're ripping off the movies. But as any Filmation Ghostbusters fan can tell you, that's not the case. There was a big lawsuit, there was a lot of hurt, a lot of hate and discontent. And as most Filmation Ghostbusters fans know, or goers, those, those those are the fan names of the uh, Ghostbusters. The Filmation Ghostbusters fan are, fans are goers. Um, as any goer knows, this cartoon series was based off of the live-action Ghostbusters with two guys from F Troop and a guy in a gorilla suit. It's charming in its own way. It's, it's corny and cliche like most live-action Saturday morning TV was, but again, it had its own charm. But lately, I've been on such a big Ghostbusters kick. I mean, I remember coming home from school and watching it, and... I mean, I have a blog entry dedicated to that as well. I mean, I I really like that show. And, you know, most women will tell you, the ones I grew up watching it, you know, some, some will say, oh, Jake was so hot. Honestly, I thought Jake was a damn beanpole. He may have that tall, blonde good-looking guy look, but for me, he was too skinny. Eddie, on the other hand, he was supposed to be the fat, doofy, cowardly, clumsy comic relief. But I know I cannot be the only one out there who had a crush on him while watching that cartoon. And you know that bingo that people say, oh, you were a kid once? Who says I can't be a kid again? I mean, I mean, I do go back to my childhood, not necessarily the living with mom and dad and having them order me around part. But I say you can be a kid again and be an adult. You can relive your childhood memories. You can have your kid moments. If you're craving SpaghettiOs, eat them. If you're craving ants on a log, eat it. You know, embrace your inner kid. But when I was a kid, we didn't have a whole lot of money. And so getting action figures from back in those days, well, it was pretty spendy. And, well, guess what? That's what eBay is for. And to prove that, I got an Eddie Spencer action figure not that long ago from eBay. I didn't get the mint in condition box. Or, excuse me. Damn rusty nail. Mint in box types. It's alright, though. I mean, he's... He cost me $15. He's got paint wear, but... It's still something from the 1980s. 
I'm eventually going to get more Ghostbusters figures, but I decided on Eddie because, again, that is my favorite character. And judging from his eyes, they're kind of creepy. I mean, the way his eyes are popping out, it looked like he went overboard on crack-filled bacon-crusted rolls while sailing on 15 days worth of antidepressants. And if you get that reference, say something in the comments. Anyway, though, I mean, I liked Ghostbusters. I liked a lot of series. And as far as fan fiction, I'm writing, I'm kind of working on two fan fiction pieces. Well, I'm not really working on the one, but... I mean, the one I'm not really working on right now is a Voltron cross... It's a cross... It's a crossover. It's both the series. I'm making it so that... I mean, here's what I have so far for the plot. It's, a uh, Chip is terminally ill. He wants to see Pidge again before he dies. And people on the Explorer are denying him the chance to go see Pidge before he dies. So part of the plot is he steals a ship, goes to planet Eris anyway, and in the meantime, Jeff and Rocky are looking for him. And then things just get strange from there. My other fan fiction piece is a crossover. It's like a mixture of Filmation Ghostbusters and Dallas. I mean, no, JR and Bobby are not going to actually appear in this fanfic, but the attitudes and the personalities of those characters kind of make their way into Jake and Eddie. I decide to make it so that Jake and Eddie have a big blowout, they go their separate ways, and then they start their own rival ghostbusting companies, and they have the whole Barnes-Ewing feud thing kind, kind of, sort of, going on. At some point, I'll be posting that online on my blog. But, I think I've rambled on for this evening. I just wanted to, just wanted to go down memory lane, have a lighter video tonight, instead of the usual child-free rants. Although I'll be back with those at some point, but feel free to check out my blog, rate, comment, subscribe. Have a good evening, everybody.